Welcome back aliens, my name is Ravind Reddy and let's continue with the series on Python. Till this point we have talked about arrays and numpy and we know how to create arrays in numpy using different methods, right? Now in this video, we'll do some more operations on array using numpy. Not just that, we'll also use a concept or we'll also work on a concept called as copying an array. How can you create another array from the existing array? So before going for copying, let's do some operations here. The first one is, what if you have an array here? Let me just create an array for you. So let's imagine we have this small array here, which, which has five values. What I want to do is, I want to add this array with the value five. So what are values we have here? Example, we have one, two, three, four, five, right? So I want to add five to each element. Now, there's one way you can do that if you want to do it manually. So you can, you can use a loop, right? Iterate the loop and just add the value five to each and every element, right? You can do it. In fact, that will be your assignment, okay? So just try it out. I will not be using any for loop here. What I will be doing here is I will use a simple operation. So I will say ARR is equal to ARR plus, plus five, that's it. The moment you do this, it will make sure that it will add the value five to each element. You don't trust me? Let's try it out. So I will say print ARR and let's run this code. I hope it will work. And can you see that we got values which is 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10, right? So it is, we are adding 5 to each element. So it's so simple when you work with arrays here. In fact, not just this, you can create, you can add two different arrays. Let's say we have, this one is one array now. Uh, I, will, I will name this as array 1. And then we got another array. And this one, I will have different values, of course. I will say a 6. So 6, 1, 9, 3, and 2. So these are my values, right? What I will do is, I want to add these two arrays. Is it possible? Of course, it should be, right? Uh, I, will, I will say this is array 3. And this one is array 1 plus array 2. So if you want to add two arrays, it is very simple. Just need to say array 1 plus array 2. So what will happen is it will add the two, uh, it will add two arrays, but with each element. So when you say 1 plus 6 will be 7, then 2 plus 1 will be 3, right? So it will, it will give you that output. So let's run this. Let's see what happens. And you can see we got 7, 3, 12, 7, and 7. So that's how you add all the values here. So it is so easy to add two arrays as well. Now this is also called as vectorized operation. Okay, so that's how you add two arrays. So what else we can do? If we talk about mathematics, right? So since uh, NumPy stands for num, right? Which is numerical. So of course you can perform certain mathematical operations, right? Example, we have trigonometry operations, which is sine, sine, cos, and tan. Can you do it here? What if you want to find the sum of the array? Let's try. So imagine if we have the first array here, let's remove the second array. And with the first array, I want to perform certain operations. So you can find the sign of the array. So you can say sign and you can simply pass an array there. And if you run this code, so that's how you can find a sign value for each element there. Uh, you can do the same thing for cos. Instead of having sign there, we can say cos. And of course, you will get the value. How about finding a log of it? It's very simple. Just replace the function name, right? So, you know, it provides you so many functions to work with. We have sign, we have cos, we have, we have log. In fact, we can also find square root. But let me just run this code first. And you can see we got the log values for the existing values here. Uh, how about uh, square, square root? So I will say sqrt and just run this. And it works. You can see the square root of these numbers. Uh, for 4, the square root is 2. And you can see that we got the exact value here. For 1, the square root is 1 itself. So, And for other values, we, we got the square root as well. So yes, this thing works. In fact, you can find the sum of an array. So you can simply say sum. And the moment you run this code, you can see we got the addition of, of the entire array, which is 15 in this case. Uh, you can also find the min value. So you can say min and run this code. Okay, you can see one, one is the min value. Uh, you can also do max, which is the maximum, which is five, right? So that's how you can find min value, max value. In fact, you can find the unique element and you can also sort this array. Now, luckily we have the array sorted here, but you can sort the array if the values are not in ascending order, right? So you can do all those operations. We have a function like unique, you have a function called a sort. So I would request you to do all those stuff by yourself, okay? So just try it out. The more you try, the more you learn, right? In fact, if you want to concatenate two arrays, you can do that as well. Example, we were having this earlier array, right? So let me undo this operations here. So you can see we had these two array. And I want to concatenate those two, op uh, two arrays here, which is very simple. Just need to use a method, a function called as uh, concatenate. And here you have to pass two arrays, a comma, not a, a r r one comma a r r two. That's it. You just need to uh, use this function. And you can see we got the big array with all those values, right? So that's how you can perform certain operations. So after doing all this stuff, let's talk about the serious stuff, right? The, the main topic of this video, which is how do you copy an array? 
It's quite be very simple, right? So if you have an array here, let's say we have ARR1. So let's say we have this array. And now I want to create another array, okay, by copying this. It's very simple, actually. You can simply say ARR2 is equal to ARR1. Simple, right? And then if you print or if you print both of these numbers, I would say ARR1. And I want to print the second array as well. Now, what do you think? Will you get the will you get the output? That's the first question, right? Uh, will you get the same value? That's a different question. So first, let's find out will it work. And yes, the ans answer is yes, it will work. What about the values? In fact, the values will also be same. So if you run this code, you can see we got the same values, right? So that perfectly works. But then, what happens is, so what do you think? Do you really have two arrays in your memory? Uh, not exactly. In your memory, you still have one array, okay? Now, how do I know that? If I print the address, you know, remember we have worked with ID, ID before? If I try to print the address of ARR1 and if I try to print the address of ARR2, now look at the values. Okay, I'm not printing it, my bad. So I've added the print statements and let's run this code and you can see the, you can see the address there. Both the arrays has the same ID, which means even if you have two different variables, we still have one array. That means both are pointing to the same array, right? Or same memory address. Now this is also called as aliasing because you are creating a new alias for the same array, right? So you can modify the values using ARR1 or you can modify the values with the help of ARR2, right? Your choice. Okay, this is fun. Now what if you really want to create two different arrays? I don't want to have same array. I want to create different arrays. How would you do that? So I want to create one array which will take different address, second array will take different address. The answer is simple. Instead of saying ARR2 is equal to AR1, you will say ARR1.view. Now view is a function which will help you to create a new array, okay, different, at a different location. Now how do I know this? Uh, let's run this, let's see what happens. So if I run this code, look at the address. Of course you'll be having the same values because we are copying it, right? But look at the value, look at the address. The address is different. That means we have two different variables with two different address locations, right? Okay, this is fun. But there is one little problem here. The copy which we are doing here, in fact, when you talk about copy, we have two different types of copying, okay? One is shallow copy and second is deep copy. I know, name is confusing, but let's get started. So when you say shallow copy, it simply means it will copy the elements, but then both the, both the array are still dependent on each other. What, what I mean by that is, uh, if I change the value of at least one element here, so before printing, of course, I will say ARR1, I want to change the second element, so I would say a of one, a arr one of one is equal to let's say seven. So I'm changing that value six to seven. Now what do you think, what is the output? Of course, when you print arr one, it will print to seven, eight, right? And what about arr two? Now since we are not changing the value of arr two, it should be two, six, eight, right? But unfortunately, since we are doing shallow copy, you can see the values are changing for both. It's not just changing for AR1, it's changing for AR2 as well. And that is something which we don't want. So this is shallow copy. Okay, now how do we achieve deep copy? Now when you say deep copy, it simply means so there are two different arrays and they're not linked with each other in any way, right? So instead of using a function called as view, we will be using a function called as copy. So copy will give you a deep copy, right? So if I run this code, uh, look at the look at the output now. Of course, they got two different addresses, as you can see here, and look at the uh, values as well. So the changes has been reflected only in the first array, not in second array, right? So that's how you basically copy an array. It's very simple. So basically, we have three ways. One, you can say ARR2 is equal to ARR1. Your job is done, but that will be simply aliasing because you sim you, you still have one array. The second way is using view. In view, you use you use a shallow copy. Right, and in uh, deep copy, you just have to say dot copy, and it will copy. So it will create two different arrays and two different values that are not linked with with each other. So I hope you enjoyed this video. You, you now you know how to copy an array. In the next video, we'll talk about one of my favorite topic, which is matrices. So let me know in the comment section how much you're enjoying these videos, and if you have any questions, let me know as well, so that I can make uh, make a video clarifying those questions there. And do click on the like button if you're enjoying this. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Bye bye.